One, two, three. Yes, it's the Late Late Breakfast Show with your host, Bernie J. Mitchell. Are you in? Are you in? And we're live to Bernie's luxury Essex studio, second only to like, like that kind of John Peel thing where he used to record in his farmhouse. And today on the line, I have my uh, good friend and defender of humanity and anything else with legs. It's Mr. Matt Hodgkinson. Hello, Bernie. Hey. Hello. I'm, I'm, re- I'm really excited to talk to you today, Matt. Thanks for making the time in your hectic schedule. Um, what just just for the two people that are listening and don't know you, um, what what do you do and who are you and all those well, sort of I'll, things? I'll, and then we'll, they, then we'll they jump know. right if into it. If they know it. you, they know me. Um, yeah. So I am. Um, what oh. am I? I'm founder and CEO of Influence Agents. Um, so I'm in that whole inbound marketing space. And uh, for the last, what is it now? Probably six, seven years. I've been uh, dissecting what it what it is to create. Uh, a presence online that that actually serves you in a more meaningful business sense, rather than uh, just this whole. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who settle for brand awareness and think they're generating brand awareness, and you know, uh, many of them don't even have a, a credible brand. So it's yeah, I've been dissecting and working out how to create real business from social, from digital. Um, the whole the whole gambit really. It's a small job. What what what's no, and this, two, so two avenues there? It does, yeah. Well, real no, no, this is the is difference like really. This is what I've come makes to realize the in the course of researching for, uh, this for the last few that, years is that uh, you know, too many people are the world. You know, focused on getting the business in and they think that's the end of the journey. And you know, a, a few of them kind of know somewhere at the back of their head that you know your best source of new business is your existing clients um and of those people who realize it you know there's a handful of them actually follow through on it and do their best to give great service so that they can continue to get more referrals and uh, more business via their existing client base you know delight their existing customers in, in order to to get more business and um so that i mean in terms of what I talk about, I talk a lot about lead generation and lead nurturing and, you know, getting more sales opportunities and all of that. But um, that's only because that's what people tend to search for and tend to talk about. Uh, the real- reality is it's kind of a surreptitious way of starting a conversation about how you can be better at serving people and doing what you do best or, um, or should be doing best. Bad, isn't it? Yeah. So, do people arrive to you with? Because I've noticed that too, unfortunately, over the years. If you write "get more sales now," loads of people show up, and if you write "sort of build a relationship with your client," it's, it's yeah. You, I mean, it's a, a massive education room. piece. Um, um, it, it, because it all the goes people, even you know, more all the people that would like to uh, that really, a relationship with their client already yeah, have it. Some, so some, some of them are thinking so symptom do, level. Do, they're do thinking, to, oh, I need, I need help with my SEO or um, change you know, their mindset. I, I need to go to or, a social media training session or something like that. <clears throat> and they don't really know why at that stage. So there is a massive education piece. We have to start a conversation. And um, now this is another thing I've learned over the years is um, is not to be that person that says. Oh well, I could show you, but you're going to have to uh, get your get your credit card out. Um, it's about you know being the trusted advisor up front and in kind of building that trust and giving away a lot of your IP for free because if you don't, then then somebody else will. Um, and off the back of that, then you know if if they stick with you, they buy into the message, and um, you know you can take it further. Then it's about making it um, you know more kind of commercial arrangement if you're able. Love it, absolutely. It's, um, well, like you say, everything's out there. There's enough content. I, I, We're in this really noisier than ever world. They're giving it away. And, IP thing. You know, what's the phrase? Uh, There's very little new under the like, sun. 
Um, lots of anyway. people are saying the same um, stuff in different ways to different I, I, people. I found this quote know, the other day, which you know, was, uh, there's no better way to show you how people are just kind of than sharing their message best to uh, whoever will listen. Yeah. Um, uh, but the reality is, you know, whether your audience is two people, three people, um, it's about continuing to show up and, and keep kind of beating that message out there until, until somebody really gets it. And um, you know, if you can be consistent, you know, those, those two do become three and they become four and five and you know, eventually 100, 3,000, whatever it might be. What's the limit? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, 100% money back, yeah. And, and, you, and you can guarantee that exponential growth. Yeah. Mate, yeah? Um, so I think it's fair to say that anybody who jumps so onto one, a one of the things I was going to ask you is if we go really back to the, what they're um, doing. And the, uh, there's the a very good early, reason for that. I think um, the, the people who create these platforms and, don't know um, what they're for. F7 so and very difficult for them to even say thing. to people, there, this is how you should be using this three stuff. I didn't prepare that for this. There was a period about... I won't edit it out. But can you speak two or three things that have uh, changed about social in the terms of the attitude with which we approach it? We've in that group for a while, um, saying, yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, Saying you're doing this wrong. You know, they were kind of jumping on a bit of a um, a high horse and saying to people, well, you're you're doing social media wrong. It should be done like this. It should be done like this. And uh, the reality is, you know, however people use it, it's, um, you know, it is, it's self-fulfilling. I think if if people want to use it to to troll, you know, it's more of a reflection of them and the human condition than anything else. If people want to use it for business and use it to as a billboard to tell people about their products, that was you know, us, wasn't it? Go ahead and do it. That's fine. You'll soon learn that um, you know from the results whether that's whether that's working for you or not. But I think everybody's in this um, this world of trial and error, and uh, whilst. You know, I could, could have said that about social media four or five years ago. I could equally say it today. Uh, I think people are still trying to fathom how to uh, how to use it for, for their ends. Uh, and so uh, there's a, a relative handful of people who are really nailing it. And I think the the common thread through all of that is is the realization that uh, it's it's about people kind of standing on a pedestal, putting themselves out there. Um, you know, take a bit of ridicule along the way, take a, take a bit of, you know, banter, take some abuse, uh, because that's what happens to, to people when they, when they really kind of step up and show up. And I think that's, that's the thing that's keeping people off social media. And, but it's also the, the thing that's, um, setting people apart, you know, the, the winners from the, from the also runs. Exactly. I mean, you, you're the you're the expert proponent of, of putting yourself out there, and um, you know, I think it's um, it's to your credit. You know, I think a, a lot of people, you know, are, are more attracted to Bernie Mitchell as as a result of that. The, the 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 bravery of transparency, transparency, um, and vulnerability. Okay. Oh, thanks. It's because I read all those Brainy Brown books. I thought I saw how well she did, so I thought I'd uh, I'd see if that tactic worked because um, give, giving away free I'm chocolates surprised, and uh, surprised that Mark would say um, that business actually, card, uh, business card uh, Perhaps, you know, raffles wasn't working. Is, um, what was um, kind of infancy so these platforms going, and oh, um, lost perhaps my lack now. of understanding? What but was I think? Um, no, I, I think we're moving away from uh, broadcast. Uh, I, think. I think people. I was are, listening to um, uh, Mark coming to realization that you need to engage. You know, engagement is such an overused term. 
I think so long oh, as there's, yeah, there's two way going on, about they're fantastic. And I think they rather than engagement the, the comment about around Periscope so, and Meerkat so he, he said it much is, more eloquently is that than one that, of traction more than anything else. Because it does take time and, to, and I really don't, uh, to get an really audience an to attract the right people to your, to your scopes. Do you think we're veering into a kind of um, It was very easy in the in the early stages when everybody was very curious about Periscope and and Meerkat, and you could broadcast a. A beautiful sunset, you know, down by the by the coast, or people playing cricket on a beach, and I mean, you know, those specific broadcasts of mine were, were each uh, responsible for you know over five hundred hearts, you know, and um, they, it, but it, it becomes more and more difficult, especially when you start to turn the conversation to something that looks a bit more <laughs> business like. Um, you know, I've, I've recently started broadcasting the um, the Leeds Every Day uh, periscopes, and I'm doing. That's that's exactly what it is. I'm so sorry. No refunds. But um, the, the I mean the uh, the other thing to bear in mind, apart from the fact that that was clearly a, a cheap plug, is um, is that traction element. It's you know it takes time to build that audience, and you're not going to get all the hearts and the followers and the the engagement on on the serious stuff. But if you think about how you would be talking about this in a in a real world environment. It's um it's quite often the case that the, the most engaged people are the ones that give you the least feedback. And and I think it's you know, I'll just go back to what I said earlier, you gotta you gotta stick with it. Um the the engagement will come, the followers will come. Um yeah. you know, Gary Vaynerchuk uh, sums it up beautifully, you know, when he when he says, you know, somebody comes to him and says, Oh, this this really isn't working, I've had my YouTube I, I channel. Thought that was a, I thought and, that was you know, a channel about writing. And, uh, I just really I was really pissed exactly, off to find yeah, out it was, about, it was about business and, generation. Uh, you know, so it's found out they've, they've only been LED three months or whatever. Channel. And it's, uh, that's the thing. It's easier to give up and it's uh, it's much more uh, difficult, and I do that in inverted commas and doing that finger thing, um, to to stand up and, and keep it going in the face of, you know, what, what might seem like apathy, but uh, in reality is just the way the world is. for 12 hours Oh, that, that's that's really true, and you have to you have to go through that curve to believe it because people people oh man I've I put like something like two and a half thousand photos on Instagram maybe, maybe more than that now, and I as I, as I travel the globe, Matthew, and speak to CEOs and key people of influence, um, I'm amazed at the amount of people that come up and say. Oh, you're burning yeah, who does the eight thirty six photo or the five fifteen <laughs> well, photo right, here's, or you know, the key for me. What or I, how's this is baby how burning? I see uh, and I've been posting that, that stuff kind of involved you know, in this years area and years and years. Um, and it's actually so Periscope is the, you know, is that's been set the, up the, on the premise the photo of posting is immediacy kind of, of like um, an art and live streaming. It's gonna make it bigger um, than it is, but it's an artistic endeavour. I thought we'd do the same thing. Google Plus came along, and the integration with YouTube happens. and Hangouts um, is a is a great great thing, but I don't think that's where it we has are now. I what I was going to say there. Um, this whole well, concept gonna, of live streaming backpedal there and say so you're forgiven for plugging because I was going to ask so you about that anyway. It wasn't, is, it wasn't sold as big enough as um, it should have been as part of Google you can, Plus. I sort of know the answer to this anyway, but I just like you, you, your take um, on it. So too much focus was um, was placed on all the aspects you can and the live stream to YouTube that made and you it just another Facebook, you know, with and you, and you, with another skin going onto um, this. Um, 
And you know, YouTube your, your uh, obviously has the best distribution that you're ever going to get for, so what's for the, video. So it's, what's the difference or the opportunities or what have you got to say about the difference YouTube, between Periscope or not and you YouTube think and you can live stream on YouTube or, now and um, you know, or I'll whether you're worried exactly about the comments clear. that might come from it and everything Can't else because they are the most disparaging on the web. Um, the reality is, so this is how I'm using it. Um, I love the immediacy and the live streaming, the native nature of, uh, of Periscope. So, so that's why I'm using Periscope. The ability for me to then, at the end of the broadcast, just save it to camera roll and then upload it to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm uh, taking it one step further, which I, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you whether you do this or not, but we're putting together custom thumbnails just to keep a, a consistent brand on the channel and everything else. Yeah, it looks, it looks nice. We're going to um, we're going to kind of have different playlists, different categories. I'm also going to do some studio videos, and we'll do some different coloured thumbnails for them. So there's a bit of differentiation, and it's all about that. Stuff. Mm. It is, and um, you know, you just have to enable the the custom thumbnails on your YouTube channel. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that will show you how to do that. Um, you know, use a uh, you know a free kind of cloud uh, image making site like Canva or PicMonkey. You can knock something up yourself in next to no time, or just to, to be frank, you know, just fire a PowerPoint and you know put a title on a nicely coloured background with a picture and take a screenshot. Um, it's yeah, it's not rocket science, and it does it does make a bit of a difference uh, when people are checking you out, and um, you know if you've got your channel art all sorted as well, that's fantastic. So. But back to the point was, yeah, Periscope, love the immediacy. You're, you're generating an audience, and Twitter is the place where people are finding these Periscope broadcasts live. I'm still finding that I'm getting more live web viewers than I'm getting um, on the native mobile app. Um, and I, 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 I like to think really, that I'll be really getting good. a lot more hearts oh, if, and, really and comments if, um, if they were able to submit them on the, on the, web, um, on the web version. But, um, and then, yeah, just uploading it to YouTube once I've done a nice little uh, edit and got a custom thumbnail. And I'm making it a daily habit. And just, um, just, time you know, will tell just, um, just kind of where it goes. Oh, but the intention really is to get... That's, that's actually really you know, easy uh, to do. Again, it seems I'm making a call back to the early very, comment. It's, it's getting my free stuff, to do, my IP out there, you know, saying stuff that, um, that I've bought into a long time ago that I've learned over the years. And um, and yes, you can learn all this stuff in a, in a live workshop with me and it'll, it'll cost you a bit of money. But um, do you know what? I'm also going to give you some little sound bites and snippets um on on youtube as well so check it out mm. you know what i haven't and i think it's just because of the convenience factor of it all is, is kind of, you can choose when. Um, so what I, what I like to do is, um, is not annoy the troops here in the office. So if, um, if they've nipped out for lunch or they've got a meeting, you know, outside the office, me, then I might you know, grab the, grab the uh, tripod and uh, get the, get the phone up and, and do something just there. And then um, the, I think more important than agreeing a, a kind of time to do it is, is making that commitment that you're going to do it on a regular basis Periscope broadcasts only stay on the platform itself for 24 hours, so it makes sense to try and do one every day. So people have always got something that they can they can view of yours if they go to your um, mobile or web profile. And um, and then it's yeah, as I say, just just about getting it done. The other the other aspect, of course, is um, maybe plan a few titles ahead so you know exactly what you want to talk about uh, from one day to the next. Um, I've gone one step further. I'm, I'm talking about a particular topic each weekday. So I've got five different uh, topic areas that I speak about. So Mondays are all about uh, team and surrounding yourself with the right talent that you need um, to, to do I love web that. and digital um, marketing. Um, um, Tuesdays how, are all are about technology, deciding uh, the time, leveraging you know, for, automation I, I, and you For know, some reason, email, I could never CRM, bring myself to do a 10-minute podcast. Of things. And now I'm doing uh, Wednesday's is all about funnels. So creating different like stages really and qualifying nice time to do that. So, and then Thursday's I'm all about content and it's so various what, different guises and creative. Well, how, how have you decided you know, about time? Good and what works, what doesn't, what formats, where should you post it. 
And then Fridays are all about uh, distribution and traffic and uh, you know how to get people viewing your content in the first place. So now that I know all of that, it's very easy for me to say, well, what am I going to talk about on the, on the traffic uh, broadcast tomorrow? Uh, jot down three or four ideas, and actually I've got a month's worth of content right there and then. So. The other thing is uh, you, you can obviously you can repeat the process because yes you know you can't be too egotistical about this. Not everybody's going to see it the first time around, uh, but also there's always a way to spin the same uh, same advice in a slightly different way. And <laughs> okay, with a hidden message, yeah, yeah. Good idea. I think the important thing is to have followers and, um, you know, and there's, the, there's the whole thing about how many people do you actually need to do? To, I mean, if, if we're talking about business and if we're talking about getting something off, off of this in terms of being able to pay the bills and feed the kids and everything, um, you don't need to do business with too many people. Um, you, you, you just need a, you know, to find a niche, you need to have a great relationship with a handful of people and they'll, they'll bring you enough business to, um, to keep you in clothes and food and water. So um, it's, it's really about having an audience, whether that's followers on Periscope, it's probably less important right now as adoption continues to grow and, you know, a lot of people are still asking that question, what's Periscope? Never heard of it. Um, Twitter, you know, uh, yeah, it, it can be difficult, but again, it, the right followers are more important than followers, and that comes with it's consistency. Ama- it's amazing how much you, content, you using the right you keywords and becoming more you discoverable know, in that way. You know and the same goes for when you're like uploading your stuff to similar, YouTube. It's, similar kind it's of your best chance of reaching people because it's you know it's got what a billion active uh, users every month. Uh, it's the second largest search engine. I mean, it, it'd be remiss of me not to quote that um, ubiquitous statistic. Um, so that, that's what where I do. You, is that's I, where you're going to get your, your viewers, your subscribers, and and as I say, so long as they're the right people, yeah. you know, who it's, cares about the numbers? Know, and then and that appeals to the uh, more religious people. What's um? So I want, I want to. What, what do you think about followers on Periscope and followers on Twitter? Because I'm, I'm really not bothered because I because I use the Periscope for a bit of live interaction and then send send it somewhere else, but. Should, if, should I be worried about that? Yeah, it's. I, I do remember that talk actually, and if, I'm trying to remember the name of the because he, he cited specifically that uh, that one social network. It was Path, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember now. It's um. Yeah, what, what happened to Path? Um, yeah, it, it's it's a really good point because I think there is you, you do see people. Uh, I was over at we're, we're going to come on to this clearly, uh, but uh, I was over at the Inbound Conference in Boston a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Aziz Ansari was talking. And um, uh, yes, he was a comedian. He was on um, he's on uh, Parks and Recreation. He stars in that show. He um, he was talking about how he's, he's kind of taken a bit of a step back from Twitter on which he'd actually gathered a massive following and um, was uh, sharing some of his funniest stuff. But he, um, and I checked afterwards and he hadn't posted for about five months or something. Something else he did, uh, despite the fact that he has literally hundreds of thousands, if not over a million followers, was um, he unfollowed everyone. He literally had uh, zero following and, you know, all these all these followers. And you just think, I mean, I have, uh, not, notwithstanding, if you're in the public um, limelight, as, as he some, clearly is, do, and you've got the likes of show and everybody else who's got you know, less than five the two people that they're following, followers. it's, it's um, just popped in my head here. It, so did, it just does smack of make the connection. broadcast. It um, smacks it. Said it One yeah, way comes, it smacks it. It's like how much time or attention are people giving you? So if you if you're if someone, there's people that follow me and they're um. 
you know, they're, they're following 150,000 people and they're followed by like, you know, 800,000 people and then they follow me. And, you know, I, I don't, it's not even I don't feel special. I think, you know, what, what is the, what is the point of doing that? Yeah. 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 And Thomas Aquinas yeah, and or someone I've, like I've that. I've probably gone too far so the other smart. way to an extent as well. I, I follow, um, when, when you look at Twitter, I follow far too many people. I mean, it's, I, I, that you wouldn't be able to keep up even if I spent any significant amount of time on Twitter. It's, uh, you know, I'll be reading, you know, whatever's above the fold, the last five or six tweets that have appeared in my timeline. And um, so the dating you know, guy. I've, got, I've got to refresh because there's yeah, 62 new there tweets. Um, so th- there's a, there is a balance to be made. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's about who do, who do you want most in your network? Who do you want to be interacting with? Whose content, whose opinions um, would you would you value coming into your world over and above anybody else? And I think um, it can be quite a daunting task to do the cleanup once we've all established a, uh, a mutual follow to a certain level. But uh, it's, I think it's worthwhile blocking out a day of your in your diary just to to get rid of some of the crap. Honestly. Yeah, that, that 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 really irritates me. There's there's a meme going around at the moment about um, yeah, there's oh. a lot of people in, in our space who have you know like more than fifteen thousand, some of them m- way more than that followers, and they follow like twenty seven people. And I, I look at them and I just you know think think the c word, which even I can't say on a podcast. And it it really it really disappoints me. I know. I think I, I think I think you arrogant yeah. knobhead. And they claim that they're so you know they they only that their engagement somewhere else or something like that. Uh, <laughs> um, I think yeah well I think in Gary's case as well I mean he's um He's really nailed Twitter. He, he loves it, and he, obviously he's um, become an investor as well. Um, I, I, but, I use the, um, uh, he, He's I also an early adopter on pretty Twitter much anything that comes out because he's um, one of his big beliefs called. is that but, you know the, the kind of sweet spot I, of being able to leverage a platform is in those early stages I unfollow uh, when it's the when it's the novelty factor. I'd certainly agree. For that, you know, in the case of uh, Periscope, but, which is so, probably the, the most kind of recent. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd rather incarnation who, of that and um, things like Blab network, as well. Go, oh, hello, Bernie. You know, very early stage. I, I engage with them rather than like following um, loads of mega you know, people. Will it, will it kind of tail um, off? Will it take over, off? Because of, of my gob over the general election, I was devastated because for a long time. Boris Johnson yeah, followed me. Yeah, I think he, you're right. And he unfollowed there's, me. There's been incarnations of that exact product um, in, in the past that didn't but, succeed for whatever reason. But then, um, but so I think it helps uh, to have a, a big name on board who's going really to well, go back so into the hill. But that, gonna, that community gonna, factor is um, certainly here. the most important. People, people and I think with, with certain platforms, I'd say this about Twitter for me, as well as Facebook to an extent as well. I engage with the community. So if you go down my Twitter stream... I've got this community of people, and I know that I know them. I know that we've connected on 
on good Most names of them and I with know good intentions and in some um, shape or form. And yeah, I can't. And there's people who are like CEOs of, you know, mega um, right now because we're, we're kind of at got a stage, stage where with, these these platforms but, aren't. Um, anything new. Not, not a connection um, where we're going to play golf and close in business. Down the line. But, um, um, you may see I've got most prominently on LinkedIn. You know, if you didn't make a yeah, note of how you're connected with somebody. Most of those people are just in my network. And that's, that's really, event, really, 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 and I, you know, I've, I've tried to follow people but I, think I really admire who are never going to follow you back. You saw the from the chaff, and I think um, it's... Um, you, know, just felt you, know, like you, you know who your you know, real go-to go people in your community are, like, and they'll be there no matter what kind of... Uh, not quite sure where that came from. But, uh, in the relationship. So it's the, it's the community element. I'm, I'm, and then the other thing Gary said was... Um, Someone was uh, when they were when they were talking about this. He goes, "I've just got really good at Twitter, so you know I know how to answer a tweet and do twelve other things at the same time." And I've been like that for years. So you know, I'm I'm highly highly into Twitter, and it's a skill I've chosen to develop. If it, yeah, it's a skill I've chosen yeah. to develop. I'd, I'd go with that, and I think it's. Um, I think that type of uh, action would be. That's a good idea. I mean, I've have seen you do it in the past with other um, with other channels. Um, certainly with your email subscribers, you know, saying. Um, I think the title was something along the lines of "unsubscribe now." And, um, I think the uh, the sentiment behind it is um, is admirable. I think if you know, it's all about concentration, especially in LinkedIn. I like to think that if I were Looking via LinkedIn for an introduction to somebody I'm, I'm, at a particular I'm company in a Google particular Hangout role, have been. that I could go to any of my first line connections that connect me to that second line connection, and and um, you know pick up the phone even to them and say how well do you know them? Do you think you might be able to um, you know put us in touch? But sadly, that's not the case, and it's not um, it's it's not because of some kind of haphazard strategy of accepting anybody into my network that. Um, even made a vague attempt to connect. It's um, it's just the fact that we're eight nine years down the line, and um, and we we just haven't you know kept a, a meaningful touch point or date. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest takeaway was that it's it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I think I, I heard a, yep. a rumor from inbound.org that there was something like 3,000 members going. And I, I thought, well, if 3,000 people are going from inbound.org, then, you know, that's pretty much everybody who'd be interested in all of this stuff. And actually there were 14,000 people there. Um, it, it's amazing. It was, it was vast. And that's 4,000 up on last year. It was 10,000 then by all accounts. Um what, what did I take away from it? It, it is a movement. I'm, I'm going, I was, just you know, I was we, um, really impressed by. Great for lunch. Um, as we're going to you know, as much as yeah, full the, disclosure, uh, the I'm, I'm, an in, I'm a HubSpot partner. I keep and, on uh, I do love the product, but about because I use it on a daily basis, a and it's, email, uh, it makes my life so much easier. I've done it in my but, life um, to LinkedIn. What I haven't so realized is how attached if, um, they have made you don't know who I am, to the term so just, inbound. Just, just I mean, there's lots, they've got, got lots got of competition, the likes huge of amount of people and Carlo, and to on LinkedIn. Pop and, you know, to a lesser extent, and, the likes of the Infusionsoft and, and I think the Big Voice, but like Eloqua, the they're coming out of their ears now, all these for, marketing for many reasons, which is a whole other podcast But nobody itself, but um, there are a lot really lives the inbound methodology or attaches themselves to this whole, and they call it a movement. And I think that's that's what came across. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. David Mitchell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Brian, Brian did some amazing dad dancing on on stage that went on for far too long, and um, yeah, oh yeah, 
um, bordering on granddad, I might say. But uh, and Darmesh was um, a lot more eloquent than you'd expect from from such a techie. But um, I think, the, yeah, it was. I was just impressed by the fact that it was a community, and um, and and this is the thing we talk about the quality of our network and concentrating it and sorting the wheat from the chaff and, and just, you know, dropping anybody who's not participating. They had 14,000 people there and it really felt like, um, have, like one big family. Enough golf and together. It, uh, it sounds like a bit of a cliche, but, What's um, it? so, um, it, very last thing is what was, yeah. what was like the, uh, your, what was your biggest takeaway from HubSpot inbound 15 in Boston, Matt? That's it. I mean, you've got a bus- you've got very business centric corporate type uh, dudes you can go to that only have thirty oh, people. I was amazed at that. And then you can go to something that's got five hundred, a thousand, fourteen thousand people, and it feels much more close knit. And it, um, I guess, it yeah, you know, it comes down from the top. It comes down from the from the uh, the intention. But that's what I was most um, most impressed with. It was. Um, I mean, if anybody gets the opportunity to uh, to go along next year, I could highly recommend it. If only because Boston is such a gorgeous city as well, it's worth getting out and about there in the um, in the downtime. So um, yeah, yeah, it was good. Well, come and um, come and check out this this new YouTube channel if you uh, if you would. I need more subscribers before I can get my custom URL, so it's going to be um, real difficult to, mm-hmm. to find at the moment. But if you, you need five hundred, you know, and uh, you know, you know why they well, do the, that. Well, the other thing is you well, can you can attach a, a website to which I've done, work. but I think it was a lag on it, so that's a bit of a, a kind of workaround. If you, um, um, and I've been, I've been your website I, I've, by a webmaster really, tools. Um, but, um, like, so in the well, meantime, though, if anybody and, searches uh, on YouTube for hashtag Darmesh leads every day, and, follow them for and, a long, um, long time. Mine are the only videos that, that come up. I'm on a bit so. worried that they've become like a another mega corp. But every day, as I hear, particularly. I haven't really seen Darmesh talk very much, but as I've, as um, I've heard, and then, yeah, on Twitter, Twitter years, slash Periscope, you know, he is deeply on, rooted get in. Get on there like, and see what see what the hell we're talking about. The status quo. That's the one. Like a proper dad. No, I have that with WeShare, for the, the WeShare Fest. There's, a, you know, there's, there's not 14,000 people there, but there's a lot of people there. Don't know them very much, but they're all together around one cause in that kind of, you know, tribey football crowd, band member type atmosphere, which which I haven't had at other, you know, some of the things we've been to where it's been, um, you know, it, businessy events and they've just been, you know, life-sucking Gorgeous. So, where where can we? Um, I know we've mentioned it several times in this in this podcast, but where can we find you on online?
how, how many how many do you need to get your custom URL? Really, I've got I'm, I'm YouTube Bernie J Mitchell, and well, that, that's because I've had it like a hundred years now, but. And that, that's just just to clarify, that's not the city leads. That's L E A D S, isn't it? Leads every day because they're coming thick and fast today. Sorry, leads every day. And we can, and it's uh, let me guess, influenceagents dot com. Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much for your time today, Matthew. And thank you, PodClean. I love using you, and we'll see you in the cloud. Bye. Please go to berniejmitchell.com forward slash podcast. Bernie, we love you. Thank you.